Good evening, folks. We're back with another episode of Three Men in an Anime. Already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we kind of we, we blew through the series. We flew through the series, yep. So this week we're covering my most recent series selection, uh, Sekai Surus Kado, otherwise, otherwise known as Kado, the right answer. Um, I'm joined, by, as always, by my good friends uh, and co-hosts, Eric Carlson and Gav Leaf. How are you guys doing tonight? Hello. I, 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 I am Eric. I'm <laughs> Eric. <laughs> I'm Eric. Um, it's been a strange evening, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. All right, so before we dive into talking about the show, I want to say this. It is almost impossible for us to talk about uh, Kado without actually spoiling anything. Yeah. I mean, we spoil the fuck out of the shows we talk about anyway. But I, I well, want to... Just in case you're holding any kind of illusions. Yeah. <laughs> so if you are tr- want to watch a show without any spoilers, we, we often try to like parcel out the spoilers as the show goes on, so you have time. No. <laughs> no, you, this you just you this, simply cannot do it with this show. It, a, it's very short, and B, the the plot, the overall plot for the most part actually takes a sidestep, and it's more about the ideas presented within the show itself. So yep. they, yeah. the the plot is almost secondary. The plot is not the literally the plot is not what we're spoiling here. Yeah, it's, it's the discussion about the ideas. It right. In. So if you want to get that and watch it before we do this. This is a good. This is where you should stop. This, stop watch. Stop listening. What have you, and come back. We are um, actually telling you to stop watching. Uh, and then and then <laughs> come back. Oh yeah, the second part is important. Please come back. I'm not. It's, I'm not. You either watch it now or fuck off. I don't care. <laughs> Eric's bad at this. I am. <laughs> so, uh, Kato, the right answer. Uh, if you follow people who talk about anime, especially on YouTube. You've probably heard the show come up, um, but but before we get to that, I want to say, I, I do we all recommend people watch the show if they haven't already? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, get that out of the well, way. Actually, and, I, and I preface that if you are a fan of classic hard sci-fi, like your Blade Runners and your Arthur C. Clarke and all this sort of stuff, watch this. Your Heinlein, your Isomorph, whatnot, yeah. Yes. If you are not a fan of that kind of stuff and you find it boring and, and pointless, just go watch Beyblade or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is not an action show. No. No, there, there's... Almost no there's action. There's no action in this show. <laughs> there well, really yeah. actually isn't... There's almost no action in the show at all. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, we're saying this right up front... We all think this show is worth watching. Yeah. There's a reason we're saying that now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now we're going to move on to actually talking about the show. Okay, Kato, the right answer is... Oh, also, if you go watch it, start with episode zero. Dear God, start with sep- episode yeah, zero. start with episode zero. Yes. It's, it's, not, not, it's not mandatory, mandatory, but it does a great job of setting things up. The A, it makes something a little bit more make sense, although I can imagine without it, there's a certain, like things that get put into motion that kind of comes out of nowhere. Right. And also, it gives a good idea of the main protagonist. Yes. Yeah. Who is not the guy in the center of the picture on the image on the screen. He's no. the other main character, but he's not the protagonist. All right, so... Yeah. Elf boy. Yeah, all right. So, basically, the main character is... Uh, our main protagonist is... Uh, Shindo Ko- Kojiro Shindo. Shindo is a highly skilled negotiator who works for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. When we say he's a highly skilled negotiator, oh my god, he is good at reading people and figuring out what they actually want. Yes. Yeah. And, and coming to a solution that leaves both parties mostly satisfied. Right. He is very good at his job. <clears throat> That's largely what the first episode does. It shows you, like, him... Getting an assignment from his boss, figuring out that his boss doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about, and giving his boss what he actually wants. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's... For, the, for the most for, for the most of the first part of that that, that first episode, um, at least me and Eric, because we hadn't seen it before, were like, "Well, okay, he's been given a job by his boss, and he's at this point he's basically screwing his boss over." Oh. 
He figured yeah. something out in a sideways flash that we just didn't even know we should be paying attention to. <laughs> yep. Okay, <laughs> which, fair which enough. Which they showed you. <laughs> yes. I mean, they did. They made a note of showing us. He showed you right in front of your face. And we were just too dumb to realize. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, true. We totally flubbed our spot checks. Yes. <laughs> um, he His partner, who he works with, is uh, Shun Hanamori. Uh, Hanamori, Hanamori is his best friend. Uh, it's yeah, bullshit. What? <laughs> At the beginning of the show, he's very clearly his, uh, uh, Shindo's best friend. Would you treat friend. your best friend like you, like you get treated in this show? No. But that's what the <laughs> implication is. And it's very clear that Hanamori definitely has a crush on Shindo. Yeah, like yeah, does. I mean, Shindo really trusts Hanamori to do a lot of important stuff. Uh, just, which just a couple minor things here and there. Yeah, they're very minor. <laughs> yes, and it's like it's stuff that like if you actually watch how Hanamori talks, you wouldn't think he'd be good at them, but he actually does a good job. Mm. Um, Hanamori is you know a fellow if you, you know he's. A, he works. He works in the same department as Shindo. He often on assignment with with Shindo, and yeah, uh, he comes across more of the paper man. You know, he yeah. he follows the paper trails and stuff like that. Whereas Shindo does the actual actual negotiations. People, yeah, people work. Shindo's also um, always very like calm and rational about things. Hanamori is um, <laughs> a bit of a you know, drama queen. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, the only other major... There are only two other major... Uh, major Jap characters from Japan. The show takes place in Japan. Right. Um, one is Soraka Sukai, who is an another negotiator for the Ministry. Um, she gets brought in after the events of the the opening, but yep. we can go into that. But yeah, she, we're she, gonna get to she's that. A main she's a main character that needs to be discussed. Yeah. Right, and uh, the other one uh, is the scientist Kanata Shinawa, uh, the bad character, yeah. who is Shina Doctor Shinawa is um, the best character. Yeah, she's Eric's wife. Who <laughs> she is a genius, and ex she's an eccentric genius. That, that's the best way to describe her. Yes. The show describes her in other ways that I find mildly offensive. Uh, yeah, same here. Mm. I, I would agree with that. They basically the, the some of the characters show describe her as being childlike, and my reaction to that is kind of, but not really. Weird, definitely. She's <laughs> weird and enthusiastic, and doesn't bother to hide it. Right. But at any rate, um, so yeah, the first episode is this long, this whole episode about this negotiation over a land deal involving a factory, and it ends with uh, Shindo and Hanamori getting on a plane to go on vacation. When a giant cube materializes out of nowhere and lands on the, air the airport absorbing the plane, and that's the end of the first episode. It is a giant cube. It is described as being precisely two kilometers by two kilometers. By two kilometers, yes. By two kilometers. Yeah. And it and Almost has a cube. constantly shifting fractal surface. Yeah. Yes. Um. <laughs> uh, one thing to note in this as well, that uh, Eric picked up straight away and Peter warned us about, the animation in this is done purely in the, the, the digital 3D style. Yeah. Um, it works great for shit like the cube. I will admit the characters themselves take a little bit of getting used to before it stops being a little, you know, that little bit jarring. The um the issue with the characters is the same issue that they always have with this kind of 3D animation, and that is they're all very stiff, on a natural, and it's tough mm. to to get the right flow with things. Like they they, I greatly dislike this type of animation. I, I can there's no there's almost no. But I could forgive it if the writing's good enough, and it is in this case. Yeah. But there's very little sudden movement with this type of thing. It's all you can see the motion start to end of motion. And it's, it's just, yeah, it just it bugs back that. to end oh, wow. of motion. Yeah. Yep. I agree with that. Um, the the only style that animation I've ever seen done properly is Land of the Lustrous, which is fucking gorgeous, by the way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> not this show. <laughs> right. No. And. Uh, 
yeah, that's where it's episode zero ends, and if you're not expecting that, holy crap, that's out of left field. It is a very I different show up to that, that point. Like, huh. Huh. Okay. <laughs> yep. I mean, uh, I'm watching a show about two negotiators uh, in Japan, and I'm expecting one of them to summon Big O at any minute, and then a cube drops out of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I was very careful not to spoil that for them. Um, and so we are introduced to what is actually that the cube is later on we find it is called Kado um, and it is called Kado by the being that resides within it uh, Yahakui Zashuna Zashuina um, Zashuina is uh, an extra dimensional being that let's that <laughs> yeah he's um not just extra dimensional, higher dimensional. Also, yeah. he has more than three dimensions, uh, four dimensions if you count time, um, d- to him. Yep. A- and he he manifests um, that that's Elf Boy in the middle there. He manifests an avatar in order to actually communicate with people. Yep. And then screams at them in wail. For a little while, yes. While he's trying to figure out how to actually keep, how to actually like talk. <laughs> this seems like a language, right? Nope, they don't speak whale. What about dolphin? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and... What about direct mental access? Nope, that's melting their brains. Let's try something else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the show, for the vast majority of the show at this point, at, from here on out, is largely about the Japanese government's reactions to the cube and their interaction and their interactions, uh, specifically, you know, the negotiators, you know, because uh, Shindo ends up being the negotiator for Zashuina, uh, and Saraka ends up being the negotiator for the Japanese government. And yes. it's a lot about trying to work out, trying to work out exactly how the government's going to respond to what Zashuina wants to do, which is advance mankind. Mm. Yeah, and, it, it's very much like you guys are neat, and um, you're, and I, I want to, to give you guys a leg up. It, and here's how. <laughs> right. And, you know, the government is trying to decide how to handle what he's offering. And so... And it's all... To the show's credit, um, other nations get involved, and, and it's treated largely how I expect it would. <laughs> yeah. It, there's a lot of... Basically, over the, course of the, it, uh, over the course of the show, Zashuina introduces as gifts to mankind, three different pieces of technology. And they all have very interesting impacts. Well, the first two have very interesting impacts. We don't get into the impact of the third one, really. Yeah. For reasons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, we'll talk about the first two. Uh, yeah, well, um, of the first one is is, is Wham. Wham, um, yes. Wham. yes they, they introduced 80s... Pop to Japan. <laughs> the Japan so what it does is it makes you up and then it makes you go go. Um, <laughs> Japan, well, we did not need, Japan did not inter- need introducing to eighties pop music at this point. No, <laughs> they are already very well acquainted with it. So, so the WOM are, are are two spheres that um, act as positive and negative poles for infinite energy. And, and literally just touch them to wires, and that's it. All about yeah. you like. And, and it, it's it produces exactly the amount of energy required for the circuitry. So don't need to advance, um, do anything for the circuitry or anything like that. And um, Zashrina as a uh, whole thing is like, here's the thing: if you have too much, if you have eaten your full of bread and you have too much bread, and a starving man asks for you, you give them more bread. This is wham. Well, make sure you always have enough bread. <laughs> I want you to share it with people that don't have enough bread. <laughs> right. And naturally... Well, that, that analogy, sorry, that analogy is one that actually comes up a few times, which is, uh, again, how he plays off why he landed in Japan in the first place. Because, right. well, looking around the, the world and these things you call countries, um, this one was the most likely to actually share the bread. Yeah. No, I can't speak no. for, for every country, but I can speak for my own, and holy shit, would we commodify and weaponize that. 
So yeah. I'm not buying any as previews. much as there will be like voices like calling for, to do it right and protests and whatnot. No, there some asshole will be like, and that's mine, and I control the wham now. <laughs> yes. The National Wham Association. <laughs> Uh. Wait, so. NWA? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And so there's a lot of reactions to the WAM. Um the UN the the UN is kind of like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, because oh, the is UN that, is in fact have pretty significant geopolitical implications, to put it mildly. The the UN basically takes the point of wait, you've got toys? We want toys. We want your toys. Give me all your toys. It's, it's less than that. The UN instantly goes, okay, this is just begging to be weaponized. And not to mention the, the tremendous amounts of economic destabilization this causes. Like, mm-hmm. their entire economy is built around providing energy for other economies. They will collapse overnight. <laughs> yep. Um, also, an important note is Zashwina, one of his demands, basically, was that all negotiations had to be made public. Yeah. Everything yeah. is televised and uncensored and yeah. He's like, I am happy to talk with you guys, but everyone must be capable of witnessing this. Because everything is supposed to be a gift for all mankind. Like, he doesn't want to give the WAM out to one country. Con- doesn't want to give the WAM he wants to give the WAM to everybody. And I do like Eric pointed this out, I missed this the first time I'm watching it. The when he creates it he busy technically only you would need one thing of WAM, one one of each one of each little sphere. Right. But like because of the way infrastructure set up, you would need more. And he initially produces what was the exact number? I forget. 167, which is the same amount of countries in the UN. Yeah. <laughs> which <laughs> was his initial like yeah, here, one for each of you. <laughs> which is really freaking clever. Yes. <laughs> I missed that the first time I was watching this. I was I was kicking myself slightly when Eric pointed that out. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's actually, of course, that's, <laughs> duh. <laughs> but yeah, so um, we are also, you know, during all of this, we've been, we are very early on introduced to uh, Dr. Shinawa. Um, she's basically the scientist they bring in to when the cube first lands and they're trying to figure out what the hell is this thing and what happened to the passengers. Yeah. Um, so she's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she's the one that they eventually basically task with in studying the WOM so they can figure out what the hell this yeah. stuff is. What? Uh, so the, the the UN says give us all the WAM so we can regulate and, and regulate them so that they're not used for evil purposes and it doesn't destabilize the world. Um, and Japan's like, uh, we're kind of told to give it to everybody. No, no, you have to give it to us. Um, we don't really want to. Okay, here's the deal. We're giving you guys this set amount of time to, to, to give it to us, or we'll impose significant, um, economic sanctions and likely military force to get those things. <sighs> because it's the UN and they're occasionally heavy handed. Yeah. They occasionally have a hand with anyone that's not in the Security Council. I should change that. Yeah. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, so they're like, oh, okay, we've got a deadline to figure out what the hell to do now, or we're boned. And, um... What's his name? Kujima. That's not right. Zashuina. Zashunina. No, no, no. Uh, Shindo. Shindo, oh, Shindo explains the situa- situation to, to Zarkov. Um... <laughs> See, I can't remember names. Eric can't pronounce them. <laughs> I'm bad at languages. And he's like, well, I, they're intended to go to everyone. Well, you can't produce enough for every... to give every person a... Uh, for, give one to every person on mankind. You just... It's just not feasible. You can't produce them that quickly. As much as you may want to. And it's like, hmm, that is true. So introduce me to your, your to your scientist friend. So this is he the basically greatest s- meeting in all of anime history. Yes. So they, they they stick her and all the wham into a one, one of those like soundproof recording booths. Um, it's, it's, a silence room. It, it's, in, it's an absolute silence room. It's literally yes. there's nothing. There's no sound. 
There is nothing. There is no EM. There is not a thing. So she can concentrate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, one other important bit that I, we do, I do want to mention. I, I absolutely adore some things about uh, Zashuina's character design. Yes. Most notably that he is very clearly not actually human because he like often will just detach his, his arms and they just like float about. He often doesn't have them like basically from like the elbow down or just the arms are floating around doing stuff. And, and what I like about this is because he's an extra dimensional being and a higher dimensional being at that. It's implied he's just reaching through other dimensions we can't perceive. Yep. <laughs> so his, his upper arms are there. They're just not in the three dimensions that we're aware of. Well, they're holding up his cloak. Yeah. <laughs> just, I, I, and this is important because it leads to one of the most amazing scenes in the entire show. Yes. yes. So, I mean, we, we've already had a, a, like a hint of Shinawa, of, of, of what she's like. Like, when they first bring her in to look at the cube, the first thing she does when she gets out of the helicopter is charge straight towards it. They're like, whoa, no, 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 no. We're sending in the drones first. She's like, oh, oh okay. Okay. <laughs> and, like, they're trying to do all the, the tests, and she's just staring at the screen, like, okay, there's, there's no EM, there's no heat source, there's no this, that, another. Yeah, this is awesome. But, like, can we try going into it? Starts pushing the drone forward, and it's like, well, no, I'm going to smash into the, the side of it. Okay. No, this is expensive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they pull out a land one, which won't instantly crash and burn. It's like, can we push this one in? This is expensive too. <laughs> We're just going to try and poke it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, she's great. Love. I love her. She's amazing. <laughs> she, she is absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, the, the second that Zasunina walks into this room, she turns around and she's like, oh my god, it's him, and starts charging. To which point his hand appears out of the ether on her chest and holds her back. At which point she like reaches down, picks up his hand, and proceeds to start gnawing on it. He's not edible. <laughs> How am I supposed to know that if I don't try? <laughs> <laughs> For the next couple of minutes, we just see her just like <laughs> on his hand, and Zashanina's only reaction is like, "Yep, she is adequate. She's adequate. She she is appropriate for the task." <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 and it shows you back, like in in the headquarters or wherever. They're they're watching the camera of what's going on, and she's just there the entire time trying to eat his hand. And her <laughs> men, her mentor is there saying, "She, yeah, she 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 is the, the she's the greatest scientific mind our our planet has." <sighs> <laughs> Long suffering sigh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because like they like someone asked him like he, like why he's not in there. She's like he's like no no she's gonna be she's a better scientist than I am. But you've got like two you've got like a Nobel Peace Prize. She's gonna have like ten. <laughs> <laughs> the Nobel that Prize. One, she's insane and brilliant and and, and um and all these other great things. She's gonna blow me out of the water in about five years. <laughs> <laughs> I like that guy, by the way, a lot, a lot also. Yes, he's also pretty yes. cool. He's just overshadowed by the awesomeness that is um, yeah. what's her face. Well, he's sort, of, he's sort of your classic older, sort of laid-back, smart you know, scientist type. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so she and he, and so she and Shindo spend some time investigating the, the, the WOM, and she eventually has a breakthrough. Because, of course, yes. she did. And so the Prime Minister ha makes a big announcement after talking with... Uh, with they're Zas coming Zashina. down to the wire on, on the deadline. Right. And, and there are people, like, uh, protesting and talking hands and all this stuff. Like, everyone's talking... Yep. Like, th there is no shortage of, like, yes, this is a big deal. We're showing you how people are reacting to it. That kind of deal. Yep. And so they have the press conference... And the Prime Minister is like, okay, we've decided to turn over all 197 at this point uh, WOM to the UN. Um, as part of this presentation, we have a couple of additional speakers that will explain something to you. Right. They bring up Shindo and, uh, and Kanata. And, um, yeah. So... <laughs> yeah, Shindo basically is there to announce that what their findings from the research they've been doing on the WOM. Yep. And he basically tells them, and you know, Dr. Shinawa comes up with this a bunch of paper and sits down at a table. He says, okay, all the cameramen in the room, 
Focus on her hands on the table. What, keep your cameras on there. Trust me. So she starts explaining. It's like, yeah, that the whole deal with the with the WOM is that they're actually channeling energy from extra-dimensional space, which is really cool. And um, as she's sitting there doing origami with the paper. And uh, what's interesting is that I've come to the conclusion that it's not the material that matters, because it shouldn't be able to exist in our space, but in fact the geometry. And then she slams the origami together, and boom, two paper WOM come up. Yeah. <laughs> And that's how you it's create the geometry. WOM. That's what matters. <laughs> and then she says, and this is how you make, what you've been watching is how you make WOM. <laughs> to which the UN are like, well, fuck, what's the point in 170 if you can just make of them? <laughs> Out of printer paper. <laughs> <laughs> now, it turns out not everybody's able to make them. You have to be able to, it's not just the physical thing. It requires you... a degree of, of... They, they say a... a sense of... Well, it's referred to as the anistropic. Yeah, the the, the dimensions the that um that elf boy comes from. Yeah. Um, like I sort of interpret it as more being basically. capable of conceptualizing higher dimensions. Yeah, I think mm. that's... And, yeah, that's not, that's not really a thing everybody can do. I'm pretty sure I can't do it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I... No. <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure I'd fail miserably at it too. Um. Oh, we forgot the other major uh, Japanese character, which is Goto, the reporter. Oh yeah, right, right, right. Yes, he becomes more of a thing towards the second introduction. Yes, yes, but I, that's why I mentioned him. So during all of this, uh, Zashinas and Kato are processing the passengers of the plane. Because after having been absorbed, they have to be reprocessed to be able to survive in the actual in the actual world. Yeah, because um, Kato is isn't really an object so much as sort of a, an in between an in between space. A, a um a boundary object is what he's a describing. boundary object is what they call it. It's sort of like a, a gateway, and they're sort of sitting inside the doorway when you're inside Kato. But so... when the when the when the cube landed on top of the plane, they had to. It's kind of like an airlock kind of situation. They had to f format the plane and process it really quickly so that it could survive inside it. And to release the passengers, they have to format them back. But because they're not doing it as an emergency, it takes time. Right. So it's going to take about a month to process all the passengers. Luckily, Cardo can just produce pretty much whatever they like. Yeah. The they, they like It's like, food? Okay, let me have a look at that one bread roll. Uh, yep, deal. And here's 30. Oh, yep. That's handy. <laughs> yep. No, anything sort of mundane material stuff, Kato can just replicate out of nowhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that whole, you know, the whole laws of conservation, you add that out the window. Yeah. Well, I mean, they kind of went out the window with the WAM. I mean, let's be real. Hey! They do mention that a couple of times, but yeah, the the whole the laws of physics. Um, yeah, um, Zashinina doesn't obey the. He he doesn't care for those laws. He fought the laws and he won. Yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't fight them so much as yeah. We'll we'll get as to that them completely. Yeah. Yeah. He looks at the laws of physics and tells him to go sit in the corner. <laughs> okay. Um. So the next thing Zashwina points out is like they they Japan, the government of Japan points out that yeah uh, it'd be really good if we could move Kado somewhere not on top of a major airport. We kind of need that. And Zashwina is perfectly fine with that, but he needs to be somewhere near the Japanese government because he wants to still be in contact with them and all this stuff. Mm. And they're like, okay, uh, well, and he sort of they eventually find an area, but it's it's gonna take some time. It, it's so like okay, we gotta figure out how to move Kado there. And it's like, well, I, in theory, could teleport it there, but that would take a lot of time and a lot of energy to teleport it. Basically, I have to move back to my dimension and then move back here, and that would be... Yeah, he says, it, he says the calculations it took to get through in the first place were lengthy. He'd Sign rather not have to do them again. Yeah. They're like, okay, uh, so can does it fly or anything? No, it, ha it, it needs to have some part of it in contact with... The, with actual surface. And okay, like, so so how do we do this? And he's like, well, you could roll it. I could roll it. 
They're like, uh... So what happens to stuff you roll it on top of? Well, the physical stuff will be fine. What about the people? Well... There, they there's, probably be present okay. a possibility. Uh, there, there presents a possibility uh, of mental and physical changes. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> so we have to evacuate this entire the entire route, like a big area in the entire route. At which point, uh, Shindo's like, "Well, what if we try this and instead of you know rolling it like like a d6, so one side to one side to one side? What if we roll it, move it along the edges? So it rolls, you know." Put up on a point, rotate it, roll on the on a, on the edge, roll back up to the point, rotate it, go onto the edge, etc. Can can you do that, uh, Zashuna? And Z- and he's like, "Yep, I can do that, no problem." And the, the Japanese government are like, "Oh, thank God." <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have much less, pe- far fewer people to evacuate from an area. Thank. It's goodness. still a significant amount of people that they need to move because, well, it's still a two kilometer wide fucking cube in there mm-hmm. yeah but it's not nearly as much as it was before <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> much less of a problem <laughs> you're not moving in enti- you're not displacing entire uh, populations right just like build the buildings along the route and that's about it mm. um and we get this absolutely stunning scene they, they do they decide to do it after the last person's processed mm. who is of course Hanamori um because that dude's got shit luck. <laughs> well, he was... He did get a very important position out of all of this. Being made the, you know, the... Uh, the direct representative from the Japanese government to... As, like, the envoy from the Japanese government right. to... Uh, to Zashinina. Um. So, yeah. Uh, after he's out, uh, we have the thing... that It happened, and... The visuals of watching the cube rolling down are just kind of spectacular, yeah. honestly. <laughs> For all of my problems the uh, with the animation, it does occasionally give you something worth watching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, so it gets moved, and at which point... Uh, Zashin has t- talks with uh, Shindo and reveals his next thing he's going to... Because, Zashin, because Shindo's like, well... The WAM's out. Uh, there's going to be a lot of big changes we're going to have to deal with. And the is like, oh, yes, great. That's not what I'm worried about. Because I've got the next thing I want to give to humanity. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? <laughs> the, the WAM was like kind of a huge deal. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, but it's limited because not everyone can, can conceptualize uh, what's needed to, to produce them. So I'm going to give you a way to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we're introduced to the next device, which is the uh, <clears throat> Sansa. Sansa. And I demand praise for not making constant Winterfell jokes and Game of Thrones <laughs> references. You just did, Eric. It wasn't yep. a joke, it was a reference. It's different. Uh-huh. You just lost a game. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, so what Sansa does is that it's this sort of oblong thing that looks a bit like a brain? Kinda. Yeah. That sort of it's... segments and starts rotating in the air, and anyone viewing it uh, gets a, an actual sense of the anastropic. Anastropic. It, yeah. it, it basically forces your, your comprehension to adapt. It is quite literally consciousness expanding. Yep. And the major side effect that he that is advertised is that you no longer have to sleep have to sleep. It turns out you can't sleep if you want you to. You can. The, the way that they reason it is that you have you now have access to the other dimensionals, you know, versions of you. So The, the rest of you that is out there in other dimensions. Yeah, yeah, so if so, now that you've got access to it, if you need to sleep, you can make that bit sleep while you carry on with your day. So you'll still get the rest, you'll still dream, and eventually it'll all come together at the same point at the same time. But as far as anyone looking, at, you know, observing you can tell, you are awake all the time. It's actually and if anybody's neat. and if anybody's getting credit for this, I want credit for noticing. Fucking Shindo was already like, yep. not suffering, but was already yeah. like, under its influence long before it actually got explained. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like he'd been, he had not slept in about a month at this point. Yes. Gav made, Gav made a little joke about you know the fact that he you know because there's a bit where uh, 
uh, Soraka was talking to him, like, have you gotten any rest recently? The guy says, not for like about a month. And I'm sitting there saying, saying nothing, saying nothing, <laughs> must say nothing. Oh, yeah, we, we, while we're watching these, we heckle the shit out of them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, of course we do. But yeah, I mean, there's there's multiple references, like people ask him, you know, oh, uh, have you been getting enough sleep? And he says, he says something like, oh, well, I'm, I'm running on adrenaline at this point. And I was like, adrenaline doesn't last for three fucking weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out that was actually thought of, they thought of that ahead of time. Yep. Yeah, they this were, was they all were, intentional. Yeah. Uh, another important bit to mention that's been going on during all this is Soraka has been very, vo- has been in conversation with both uh, Shindo and Zashuina, that she really doesn't think all of this is a good idea. Yeah. She's been very, um, it's been very much like humanity is not ready for these advancements. Um, we need to come to these uh, concepts and ideas by our yeah, it, uh, it, on our own, and not just have them handed to us. Yeah, it's uh, more it's, the it's taking the challenge of life away. If, if, if you know, if everything's just being handed to you, it's like evolution might happened for, through necessity, and now everything's just being given to us on a plate. It's like it now I will fight her right. on this. Um, it, it's I, backseat it's, gaming. It, it's playing the game with the cheat guide out. You know, it's. There's no what's the challenge to life if there's no if there's no you know if everything's just given to you except by providing this you open up other challenges to uh, mm-hmm. like I I'm totally in favor of consciousness expanding um, brain lozenges and, and infinite power marbles so <laughs> I think I think there'll be some significant growing pains for society but on the whole we'll end up much better and, and in a better position to mm-hmm. do other more awesome things yeah. I think her po- her point was though it was okay. These are cool, but where does it stop? And we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, and we'll get to th- and we and we will. And I will state, obviously, we, we we haven't got to it there. But how quickly did that opinion of yours turn around when we got to that stage? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the- there was a line, and it was crossed. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, so yeah. Uh, it turns out that merely viewing Sansa is enough for the ch- to for it to take effect. You don't need to be in the same room or even the same continent. You just have to see the the brain lozenge. Yes, the undulating brain lozenge. Lozenge. <laughs> oh, that's a word I wasn't expected to hear today. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, the reporter uh, Gono. Uh, during all this, he's been on the front lines reporting on all this, and he was the first on the scene to get, like, news footage of, of, of Kato itself. Uh, he's been, he and his crew have been on the front line of the whole thing, and he is eventually approached by Adam Ward of, uh, of Seton, the big, big internet company. Totally, totally not Google. Totally not Google. Totally not Google. Does not have the Google logo except with Seton. Their, of their main head office is totally not a crash for adults. <laughs> nope. It's totally a Google stand-in. Uh, and the head of uh, of Seton, Adam Ward, basically pitches a job to Gono to be, like, to basically start up, you know, be his, the face of his new news thing he wants to do. Specifically to report on the stuff about Kato and Zashuina that is not being handled right now. Because he's like, you were on the front lines to begin with, I know you know where you want to go next, and your 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 television company probably won't let you go there. And I'm willing to write you a blank check to go do that, <laughs> because that's what I think that's what we need. <laughs> and to his credit, um, the, the reporter's like, you know what? That's right. <laughs> What's well, actually the other great bit is that you know Adam Ward comes into the meeting and shows him the footage of you know him flying yes. the helicopter up and recording the whole thing. Right. And Goro's reaction to seeing the video on, on what is obviously YouTube is like, so, 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 so do you know, so he asks him why you're here, and he asks, so, Ward asks him, so do you know why I'm here about this, all this, and Goro's like, to give me the royalties for this illegally uploaded video? <laughs> <laughs> See, we, we're all laughing at that, saying, yes, go you. And Adam Ward's like, well, okay, I can start with that if you'd like, but um, <laughs> <laughs> the is a lot more. I'm like, oh, oh. Oh. 
But yeah, Gono accepts the thing, and his crew comes up to him. He's like, yeah, we're going along with you. He's like, guys, you know, this could get us arrested. And they're like, but it's what we do. Are you kidding? (laughs) We're reporters. This is what we do. And Gono's like, awesome. (laughs) So they go off to try to get an interview with Zashuina. (laughs) Um... And the, you know, the Japanese, the, the Japanese, you know, defense force are there and they're like, uh, you're not supposed to be crossing this line. You should go away. We'd like, you're not, we're going to end, you know, you have X amount of time to, or we may have to resort to force. And Gono's like, well, that gives us how long we can stay before we have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice of them. <laughs> and Zashuina opens up and gives him a helicopter landing pad to land on. Right. Meanwhile, um... Sashumi and Shadow Man <laughs> have been discussing uh, uh, so- the, the the Sansa lozenge, and um, they're basically like, "I want to give this to everybody, and they only need to view it." But I'm not sure how I can do that. He's like, "Well, there are a couple of possibilities. For example, those reporters." <laughs> <laughs> And so they they come in. They talk, and Zashuina basically explains what what's going what what's going on. And they he basically says you know, they you know. You, I'm this going is, to show you a thing. This thing will expand your consciousness and alter your mind. If you don't want to don't want to see it, look away. Yeah, I mean the the reporters make it clear. It's saying, look, all we're here to do is report truth. We're gonna put it out there. We're gonna broadcast it to the world, as long as we put a warning on the front saying, look. We're just reporting what this is. This is your choice. If yep, you yeah. watch it, you know, on your head be it. And they, when they actually report it, they do a very good job of like, there is a constant warning on the screen, right up, leading right up to this. Like, this is a viewing this device will cause um, will alter your consciousness and, and and your mind. There might be other long term effects we don't know about. Please be aware. Yep. Look away if you don't if you don't want to take. The risk. I mean, the answer is, of course, I'm going to fucking watch the freaking sp- brand expanding friggin' lozenge. <laughs> but that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and through all of this, uh, 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 Soraka is. She's basically trying to convince uh, Shindo that, to try to find a way to get Zashuina to leave. Yeah. Uh, to go back to the anastropic. Uh, And she's looking when this thing is being when the, when the Sansa is shown on the news. She's looks very sort of crestfallen about the whole thing. Mm. Everyone else is freaking out because they've just dropped the brown acid. <laughs> <laughs> this is after she's basically taken uh, Shindo on a little trip to sort of talk to him and to explain her views and her background and all this stuff. Um, and it's clear that there there are feelings developing between the two, yes. even if they're not acknowledging them. Yep. There's there, there's a lot in common between the two, and there's a lot that's not very much in common between the two, which we'll get to in a moment. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um. So Sansa's revealed to the world, uh, and Shindo's gotten to the point where he's like, "Yeah, this is all well and good, but I've really got to talk to." Zashuina about maybe at least slowing the pace down a bit. Mm. <laughs> I have to talk to him. <laughs> and Zashuina, he, he goes and talks to Zashuina. Zashuina is entirely happy to see him. The two of them are, have very clearly bec- sort of been becoming friends as this has been going on. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. um, is also... It's gone. Uh, Zeshwin is also becoming more human and developing more of a personality as opposed to simply just yep. depositing information into the uh, into the air. He, he's developing a personality. He's reading and interpreting. Uh, he's reading books, and there's actually a great little scene. He's reading a, a children's book about um, dinosaurs, and, and Shadow's like, "So why why are you reading it? Can't you just scan the, scan it, get all the information that way?" But it's meant to be interpreted this way. Yes, and I want to have that experience. 
the the, ex, the, the experience okay. of reading it this way is also information, which is what I'm interested yes. in. Mm. Uh, one of one of Zashuina's main things as well is making sure that um, at least at the beginning he, he's very very particular and very picky about the words that are used when whenever anything's discussed around him, because you know the transfer of information has to be 100 percent accurate or as close to it as possible. Uh, or at the very least, close to it as possible, and it frustrates him at first that you know Shindo tries to translate and put things into layman's words, and he's like, "No, that's not the accurate word." It's like if you want them to understand, let me use these words. We have to start with the smaller I... concepts and then move up to the big ones. <laughs> nope. Yeah, and this is why he gets a bit of a bond with Shindo because Shindo is able to communicate with him. On that level, we're well, not on, not completely on that level, but closer than any other human, at least. Um, there's that level of understanding, and you know the the, the right words, and then the, there's no miscommunication and all this sort of stuff. Yep. So yeah, he goes in with some beer and some sake and some snacks to talk with him, and it's an interesting conversation, shall we say? <laughs> mm. Um. While they're having the conversation, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, what's her name? Uh, da, 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 da. Soraka. Yes, no, well, that's, it was Soraka and uh, oh god, what's her name? I'm trying to remember. And the, Kanata. And Kanata and Shinawa, yeah, Doctor Shinawa. Yeah. Are uh, Doctor Shinawa was out there, sort of. She's still looking at looking into sort of the. The 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 sort of refer, the repel rep, the repelling field, which she this effectively calls Fragonix, uh, because <laughs> it's this Kato basically you can't penetrate it because it's sort of not there but there and it, it's this weird sort of friction. It's not so yeah, it's not so much that it resists; it's that you're. You're trying to push against it when it's not actually there. It's in a different, you know, it's in a different dimensional space. You're pushing on it, but the, at the same time, mm -hmm. you're not. You, it looks like you are, but you're not because it's not there. So it, she's it, sort of investigating yeah. the, the effect and trying to figure out things about it. Uh, and Soraka is very worried about this conversation because it's going on for a while and she's not sure what's going on. And she's clearly developed feelings for for Shindo, which uh, Hunter Roy points out. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So no, no, no. And he's like, D "Don't look. Don't worry about it. I I love him too. Seriously. <laughs> no. <laughs> this other girl loves and him so too. This like, other chick that that loves him, but uh, but she pretty much friend zoned herself. So <laughs> she's like, "Yeah, I love the guy, but I no, I couldn't handle him no. in a, in an actual <laughs> relationship. Nope. <laughs> He'd eventually drive me insane." <laughs> <laughs> or I, I yeah I yeah at any rate uh, so Soraka basically tries to uh, get you know Dr. Shinawa to figure out a way to actually get through the field which as this is all this is going on she does figure she's like, yeah I think I know how to get through there great can you get us in there she's like oh no no I need to actually build the device it'll take at least three days <laughs> and Soraka, like, oh, um, yeah, and... it's, it's, it, it just basically sums up um, Shinawa. It's, it's like literally, can you, she's like, she, she literally says to her, "Can you find a way through? Give me a moment." She starts tapping away, da, 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 da. like comes back to her a bit later on. Ha ha! Yes, I can break through this. Great, let's do it. No, not now. Not no, now, I mean, of course no, not now. No, now. I have the I have the math and the theory behind it, but um, yeah, I, I need to build something. something. Yeah, I, that, it, we need to get me a team of engineers. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I actually like. There's there's no, like, ass pulls in this show. Mm. It's like, uh, no, no from the, at least from the scientific perspective, at least, it's like a case yes. of, it's not just, oh, my God, I could do this. I could MacGyver my way through extra dimensional science. No. It's like, I've done the math. I've done the, the working out. Okay, I know how to do this. Now I need to go research it. Oh, uh, for the most part, yeah. There are no ass pulls in the show. <laughs> there, there's one. There, there's a major ass pull. One yeah. really major ass pull. 
Yeah, one. but that's in the last three episodes, and we don't count that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting to this. This is all happening during the eighth episode. Yeah. Up to this point, and we haven't really like de- delved into the the themes and everything. We've we've with this is literally us just skimming the plot. Yep. Um, up to this point, it's been really engrossing, really like in depth, thoughtful, um, and developed intellectual sci fi. You know, bringing up a lot of interesting points and causing discussions between us between episodes. Yep. And then we get here. So yeah, Zashwina reveals the next device he wants to give to humanity. Which is oh god, I can never remember the name of it because the Jesus. Nanomis it's Nanomis Hine. Hine. I no. don't know why I can remember that, but I can. <laughs> Nanomis Hine. Which um yeah, it allows you to basically say the laws of physics are stupid. Yeah. Yeah. This is where I go, oh wow, that's Gravity, momentum, inertia, no. time. 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 Yeah, no. that was my like. Wow, that's uh, that's that's more than just giving people a leg up, dude. That's uh, yeah, that's more than just expanding consciousness and giving people more uh, and and removing the limiters on, on energy usage so that we can do more yeah. stuff. This is just <laughs> laws of physics, <laughs> the the unbreakable laws of creation. Fuck them. <laughs> They're for chumps. Yeah, but yeah this is where. Zashwina reveals what exactly is going on. And this is where things are a little get start getting squirrely. Uh because uh so what he's actually what he's actually doing is he's trying to advance advance humanity's understanding and concept of the uh the anastro- anastropic so that he can bring humanity there. Most specifically, he really wants to bring just be, because it turns out that the R universe was created by the anastropic beings as a way to generate more information because they're very good at processing information, and that's what they want to do. That's their driving, like understanding and processing information is what they it's they, what they live for, literally. So they create a whole bunch of universes to generate information, and ours happen to create intelligent life. Which is capable of something that was able of creating new information on its own, which was something they were they they. This was astonishing. Like even it it, it was creating information on its own. Like it created life the within this one particular yeah. universe, and that was like wait what? That's amazing! Holy shit! What's more, it's intelligent life. Eventually, yes. Wow. Uh, and he wants to bring it back so they they can actually study because that he they want what they want is more what he says he wants is more information than he can they can possibly process. And the 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 reason behind it is that taking a complex three dimensional being and bringing it into the I the believe thirty seven dimensions they say something uh, like yeah. that yeah, something like that forty yeah. dimensions not- because he, he's not talking about R three yes yeah. So basically, he's saying that, you know, you're producing so much information at three dimensions. Imagine how much you'll produce at 40 dimensions. And yeah. he's like, he wants to bring, and he's, he's, he's very ecstatic, excited about bringing Shindo over because, again, it's not just that he's bringing this information around. He gets to show his friend his universe. This is what he wants, what he, you know. He's, this is sort of part of what he wants. And Shindo's like, uh... <laughs> so what happens when you bring people over? <laughs> I don't know. Don't know yet. We're going to find out. <laughs> uh... Legs, you know? uh... It's, like, it's, it's cool. You've got six billion. All I need is one. And, uh... and, and Shindo's hesitating. Zashuin is like, oh... Yeah, you're not ready for this. I did this way too early. Shit. Okay, well, um, right. Well, I made a copy of you when you came in here, so I'll just erase this one and start over with the new copy later. Squeeze me? <laughs> what, what do you mean a new copy? <laughs> All the information that was contained with you, you is also contained in this copy. And, um, well, I fucked up telling you what I wanted to do. You didn't take it the way I wanted, so... Just... 
We set the save point. Yeah. So I'll just erase this, this this copy of you and start over this one. But wait, what? At which point, Zashwina summons a giant energy blade thing. Um. Yeah. See, up until this point, no action whatsoever. Yep. And then. It yeah. Turns into so Goku's yeah. Uh. Meanwhile, outside, uh, Soraka's getting more and more agitated. And more desperate to get inside. Uh, and she, as an aside, she's always been wearing this ring with this sort of very sort of odd sort of red sort of ring on the inside, the sort of inner lining of the ring. So almost like a gemstone sort of inner ring. Yeah. Uh, which she mentions at one point is basically a, it's she wears it as a promise about to you know about something. Forget exactly how she phrased it, but uh, yeah, it, then, uh, it's a it's a, it's a memory of faith or something like that. So, something well, like that, a promise of faith. Of faith. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. When you know Zashwin is about to you know erase this copy of Shindo. Uh. Yeah. The ring breaks. She and she disappears. A giant hole in Kato, and she appears in kind of a weird bodysuit thing and blocks the blow because she's also an astropic being. Yeah, she shops at the same shirt style the guy from Tron shops, apparently. But And that's where episode I... 8 ends. And Eric said, what? Yeah. Yeah, the, the fuck, what I think was exactly my, my phrase, what I said there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. This is where Kato the Right Answer takes a sharp left turn. This is Out where of... Kato the Right Answer dives headfirst into mediocrity. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately. So yeah, I mean, the... this is uh, the, the way I the way I explained it. In the, you know, when we watched it, is like, look, I have nothing against, um, you know, the the action, the magical girl stuff, oh, no, or same. even the the sci-fi, even even touch of Sentai that it almost went. Um, but and, and as much as I'm not into the, the 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 hard sci-fi as these two are, you had pitched me. A completely different show up until this point. Yep. With three episodes left to go, this was not the time to suddenly turn this into an action adventure. Which, to be fair, it isn't really. It's not, but it just it, it run it goes away from it's everything that's Absolutely. built up. Absolutely. Yeah. And um. just relies <laughs> on bullshit magical science. Yep. And not yeah, even, throws... like, reasonable. It's, like, literally bullshit, magical bollocks. So, yeah, what comes from here on out is basically uh, Soraka and Shindo trying to figure out a way to stop Zashuina from force, forcing humanity to come to the Anastropic, because it'll probably... She points out to, to Zashuina, yeah, the odds of actually succeeding in bringing a person across, because he you, you, you says he only wants to bring one across. She's like, yeah, but the odds of that actually happening aren't very good. And he's like, yeah, well, I, we've got six billion of them to work with. Yeah. It becomes, it becomes apparent that Zashuina is actually a bit of a, a rebel thinker within the Anastropic. Yep. Um, the rest of them are quite happy to sit back and say, yeah, Dude, this is this is fine. It's given us all this information. We are, uh, if no, nothing, if but patient. Like literally, um, Zashinina and Soraka, just to name those two, have been alive when this universe was created and long before. Yep, yeah. they've been there the entire fucking time. Yep, long lived does not. When they they refer to humanity, saying as well, if they stay in this universe, they're only going to live like another billion years. They're talking about the species, not yeah. the individual, like yep. these guys are. Yep, the species will last another billion years, and that's ridiculously no time at all to them. And mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, and it basically it's you know Zashri is trying to do that, and they're trying to stop him, and that's basically the rest of the show. Now they do at least try to reason this out with Soraka and, you know, how she's been there, and... It's a, de it's a decent mm -hmm. explanation. Oh, no, the, the bits about how, what, how she came to this universe and what she's been doing, that bit was 
A, interesting, B, beautiful. Basically, mm. the way it works out is that she... She she has been like she was one of the ones that helped create the the, the universe in the first place. Yep. Yes. And she was watching it and looking at all the information. Going, she was the Ooh, caretaker. Look at that. Ooh, that's cool. Ooh, look at that. And of the of the the bunch that were all watching, she kind of got a little bit infatuated. And when shit started to really get interesting, she decided to actually enter the universe, which again was unprecedented for them at the time. <clears throat> but you know, it could have been suicide for her. But she went in. And, you know, it shows her living multiple lives. You know, she spends time as a bear, as a plant. She's now trying out as a human for a bit. Uh, you know, just, just going around and experiencing all these different things and learning yeah. and all the rest of it. Um, and, you know, because she's done that, she's cut herself off a little bit. So she's not as powerful as, say, uh, you know, uh, Zashinina. Well, she's also inhabiting, like, bodies a as, they, as they're created naturally. Zashinina yeah. is has a custom-built avatar. Yes. But she's been there that entire time and basically ass assigns herself as this, you know, caretaker, essentially. A, yep. a, an, administ an administrator of, the, of this universe and just just lives the life there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really neat she, because, you know, she, she moves into a, into a, a life as it's, as it's born and stays there until it dies and then she passes on to something somewhere else. Yep. And it's really cool. And she gives a really... And it's everything a beautifully she... done episode, and yes. it earned back a lot of, of um, the it earned back a lot of the, the, the goodwill it, it lost with the whole and aha superhero fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. The, the episode nine is a good episode overall. It's got some yeah. sketchy bits yeah. to it, but like seriously, it's a good episode. The, and... the, the, sour, the souring note is like like Eric just said. They for some reason after this after eight episodes of intellectual thought provoking. Uh, you know, science fiction, they descend into generic superhero show. Yeah. I didn't love me a good superhero show, but that's <clears throat> not what you sold me. Nope. No. That's not what you sold me, and I was so interested and excited by what you sold me, and then I you was... go and do this. Here's I the thing, was... it's not even that bad by, um, by the standards of that genre. Not at all. It's just... Jesus Christ! Do you know what you were, what you had? You clearly I, didn't know what you fucking had. <laughs> I even said, even based on the show it is, it is by by no means a bad show, but it built up so much that the letdown. Oh just my God! It's a perfectly it's a perfectly fine ending for any other show, but it was not what I wanted here, and. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, and Karen. we're not the only ones because I did actually read a few reviews. Oh of no, this, we are um, not the only ones. This is I the consensus opinion. Yeah, yeah, and I looked into this, and the majority of was, oh my god, what was he smoking when he got to episode nine? Um, one 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 review that I saw was, wow, the, it was must have been like episode six or eight, uh, six or seven or something like that. It was like, oh my god, this is actually possibly the best science fiction show. Of its kind, this guy is going up there with you know your, your, your big, um, you know sci-fi writers. The, this guy is an absolute genius if he holds this going forward. And it must have been towards the end of the season because the same guy replied not long after. Well, so much for that idea. Yeah. I. Uh, so yeah, I we could talk about exactly how they end the story. It, I don't really want to. It's it's clever in and of itself. Yep. Sure, it's actually a pretty damn clever way they 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 solve yeah. the problem. It's just... so so to be fair, you know. what Shindo figures out what it is Zashuina actually wants because that's what Shindo does. Right, mm -hmm. Zashuina wants to be surprised because that's never happened to him. It hasn't been. It hasn't. He's not been surprised since they discovered that this universe was generating its own, own information. And it's very clear that he wants that desperately again to be surprised by something. He's chasing that dragon, for lack of a better term. Yes. And so Shindo comes up with a plan to surprise him. And we see 95% of the plan being set up. They create some Wuji tech to neutralize the his Fregonics. So that, you know, Shindo can actually... Because without it, 
Zashuina can basically just kill Shindo without even thinking about it. You, you know, he right. can just reach into his into his chest and crush his heart if he wants yeah. to. There's and there's nothing he can do about it. So they need to build a device to let him to stop one blow and for him to land one blow. And Soraka basically wa- wants to give him this little th- isolation gem, so that he gives him this isolation gem to just basically imprison Zashuina. And that's not what Shindo wants to do, and this you know upsets Soraka to some degree. But she understands what his plan is when he explains, he, which we don't hear the full details of the plan explained to her. Um, and they bring in Hanamori to for a very important rest, the, the 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 rest of the plan. And they explain it to him, and he's heartbroken by it. Um, yeah. Because all this is very likely going to get Shindo killed. Um, and so they have their little conversation. Uh, Zashuin is basically makes his pitch again to to Shindo to you know to come to come with him to the Anastropic. Anastropic, and he actually explains that you know he's missed you know Shindo because he had the copies and they weren't him. Mm. And he realizes that like even if he made a copy of himself, it wouldn't be him either. And there's just something missing, and he's not sure what it is, and that that he finds interesting. But also, he misses having his friend around. Hmm. <laughs> Doesn't quite explain why he goes on a Madden, uh, you know, murder spree. But okay. uh, well, the, the Madden murder spree on the other co- of the copies of Shindo that aren't actually him. Yeah, well, that's because I I got nothing. Um, <laughs> or during the friggin' fight, and then there is a fight. The <sighs> One of the things I really like about Joshuina, is, as Peter said, is his character design with his hands showing up wherever he needs them at the time. They completely ignore this during the fight. They yep. just act like normal hands. Yep. You don't see his upper arms, but that doesn't matter because it... Arrgh! Yeah. So, he realizes that, you know, and he asks, asks him again, and Shindo's like, no, I, I, it's not that I don't like you, and I'm not. it's not that I'm not interested in seeing the anastropic. I would be lying if I wasn't. If I said I wasn't, but... I really like this world, and I've got things I really care about here. I don't want to leave it that like permanently. And Zashuin is like, you, you, so you, you, you can't. I understand now. You, you can't come. I, I, I get it. <sighs> I guess that means I have to get, re- de- have to destroy you. To which my reaction is, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. What? But, but why? Does not follow. No, like that just does not follow <laughs> at all. <laughs> So yeah, there, there uh, seems to be a hole in your logic there. <laughs> yeah, so it turns out that their special devices don't work actually, and he kills Shindo. At which point it's revealed that that was actually part of Shindo's plan. That it had to look like their plan actually failed so that they could actually surprise him. Because a car drives in behind uh, the platform where Sh- where Zashuina has put Shindo's body to rest, and out steps Hanamori and this teenage girl. Who is Shindo and uh, To which everyone daughter. involved goes, what the fuck is a car doing here? And yeah. who's this? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck is a car doing here? And who the fuck are you? And, oh, wait, she's Shindo and Soraka's daughter. And, yeah, she just completely what the fuck pones uh, Zashuina. Because they, they, they throw shut some, up. That's they why. They throw some bullshit where, the, where Zashuina is a uh, anastropic being using a um, an avatar. Yukika is an actual being of the anastropic and human. Yes. So, so she can use power. their ability... The, the, his, the, the Fragonix stuff is... The weird friction Fragonix powers that he's using are a result of him not being adapted to this universe. It's literally the white noise of him forcing his way into the universe. Right, yeah. Um, and she's like, well, yeah, that's all well and good if you don't know actually how to, mani- how to manifest yourself in this universe. If you actually knew what you were doing, you wouldn't need them. And she proceeds to just throw him around like a fucking rag doll. Yeah. Don't ask and, me how that works because yeah, I, you know, I got she... nothing. It's a cool looking sort of con- conflict. It looks neat. Well, it's it's again, it's that multidimensional aspect. You know, we you know she she waves a hand and he goes flying. For all we know, she could be physically grabbing him in another dimension. Probably is. I'm pretty sure that's exactly how it's working. Yeah, it's exactly. Just that it's not really shown well, and yeah. She's... And then she generates a spirit bomb and kills him. Yeah. Because spirit bomb. Yeah. Right. I what will the say, uh, what the, the point? The... Sakura is an anastropic being inhabiting a human body, yeah. not 
an anthropic being with a, a, a unique body. So how does this friggin' hybrid... It's not I actually don't... a hybrid because it's still just two humans I... banging on uglies. And you know what? The show before this would have addressed that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Literally, the, the, their daughter... The daughter is the, the big ass pole in the show. It, yes. It's, ne- it's not set up. It comes completely out of nowhere, and it makes no goddamn sense. They did set up the time difference. Thing, yes, they said that the, they, they take advantage of the anonymous hind to 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 let her age appropriately and to yes. conceive her, have her be born, and age up to the point where she could do what she does. And Hanamori stays there to basically watch over her. That's the only other part. Yeah, so they they yeah. they they prefaced that and they pulled Hanamori into the little pocket universe they created to hide from. Um, to hide her, basically. Yep. Uh, and said, "We've got a job for you." And as far as we're know, that that's it. That's the last we see of him until that point. Yep. Um, and I, I will say, the moment where she's she, where the daughter sort of floats a cell phone over to Zashuina, and it's recording from Shindo holding her as a, the kid is a, the daughter is a baby, and him explaining what it is, and then saying, "Did I surprise you?" Was a yeah. great <laughs> fucking moment. I have. I, it- it is. This is. A, there's a couple. There are a couple. Of, just a couple of rare glimpses, little shining moments of of what we had previously. And Zashinina's face, when he sees that, is like, "Oh my god, you fucking asshole!" <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's this. It's this mix of fury and delight. Yes, which is beautiful. Mm. But ah. Uh... Uh. And yeah, so Zashuin is gone, uh Kato disappears, and with all of that, the all the 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 ha- the hob stop working, the Sansa effect no longer applies, and the Nanos Hind go away. So World's basically because been reset, except that people know that the, the Anastropic exists. Yes. I call bullshit on that. The, it's, I, I, can bullshit under- the last I can understand that it was basically as much as you know we discovered. Um, I can quite imagine that it was um, Cardo that was just powering all these devices the entire time, just to to bring us far enough to actually believe and go with him. I can buy that. I. My- Here's the thing that requires a a level of deception and guile that I don't think he was capable of until he'd been exposed to humanity for long enough. <laughs> and him doing that later on, sure, but that was not part of the. But that was clearly wasn't part of the initial plan because he had no idea what deception or guile were. It was a. <sighs> <sighs> and I'm so, going to be honest that this whole all of my problems with the show reek of studio meddling. The, yeah, I, like, my, I I think there was a lot more going on there. Um, I think there was a much better ending um, originally planned, oh, and it I said, mean, "Fuck you." <laughs> Give us a supervillain fight. The, yeah, the thing for me is a this show had been set up and sold me on something completely different. And then tried to give me, like you say, the supervillain fight at the end, and that was not how this show needed to be resolved. This show, like literally, I, I agree, Eric. It one of like it one of two things. The situation is one of uh, one of two things, or some combination of them. Either the author was just had no idea how to end his story and was sort of afraid yes. of his own story and just did what he could do to come up with something to end it, or the studio looked at his script and said, "So where's the villain?" What do you mean? Where's the villain? Where's the villain? There isn't I one. I think this is... honestly, I think it's the latter, just because of how, what the fuck? Why Zashinina turns to just have fucking murder lust for um, I for, for Shindo. I, as I said, I, it could be some combination of the two. Also, mm. like I could easily see him not knowing exactly how to end the story, and the studio basically saying, "So where's the villain?" Well, you just you do, you don't have a villain. You need a villain. Make Zashuina yeah. the villain. That 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 fixes your problem and gives makes sure that we have a villain and a conflict to satisfy to satisfy the audience. To which my reaction is, but, but, but it made it predictable as well. Because I mean, I, how many times did I come up with different theories about how you know Zashinina was trying to when when he was using the word elevate mm-hmm. humanity, but he's always really precise about the words he uses. 
Well, the elevate meant something else to him, and we were just hearing that, uh, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, it kind of did. Well, it did, but whether it was, you know, whether was he preparing humans for being food or some test subjects, which he was in the end. But it it just became so fucking yep, I, generic. It, it it did. Yeah, it, it's, the the ending I, it was profoundly disappointing. And what made it worse? And I know it affects you guys less than, than me, but I, I, this is my fucking bugbear, and we've had it before. Mm -hmm. No one in this show gets a fucking happy ending. Because no. God knows everyone's got to be fucking miserable at the end as well. Because at this point, we've already seen um, Soraka, like, heal uh, Shindo from, like, grievous wounds the first time Zashinina attacked him. Yep. Um... But no, um, his godlike daughter can't do anything for him. He's dead. He well, is gone. to be fair, the, there is, Sasha Wheeler did rip his heart out of his he, chest. He was, yes, he was He dead did Kali Ma him. <laughs> yeah. He did. But yeah. they've, also, they've also shown that they have control over time. Yeah, well, um, er, uh, mm. um... Then, on top of that, God Daughter shows up, kills Villain of the Week, because that's all he fucking is at this point. Um... And then we get a nice little coda with them all back at the the town, and uh, one of one of the the side characters comes up and asks Soraka, "So, uh, so where's Yukika? Ah, who knows? She's an anisotropic being. She she just went off to explore. Oh, good. Oh, so she just fucked off into the ether. That so she pops up out of nowhere, does one thing, and then fucks off. So you've basically gone from this whole fucking great cast. The doc, the, the scientist, um. Shinawa, we see her feverishly working on something in the background during the finale. Like, okay, something's going to come out of that. And then we go and look at look at something, and then always we, all we see is a little computer with be back later. The one thing that I can th I, the, the one hopeful thing I can think for that is that she figured out a way to go to Anastropic on her own. Yes, yeah. that's that's the one thing we came to, to to think about it. And then to cap the very episode off, the, the, the whole thing. We get a, a shot of Soraka looking at photos of Shindo and her fucking hiccup of a fucking family. And we get a weird sound effect that, from what I can understand, means that she's decided to fuck this body off as well and just go back into the ether herself. I, that's not how I interpret it. I got more of a, a, a Shindo ghost because the, uh, the origami he made for her fell over. I still think it was her just saying, fuck this life, I'm off. Maybe. I don't know. There's not enough there to, to say either way. There is the problem. There's, There's not, not enough thing. information. Not enough. The ending is profoundly like, disappointing. Profoundly. The only, can, the only people that I can think got anything out of this was probably Gono and Adam Ward because they yep. made a shit ton of money. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's they made all and, and, the and, money. and Gono got to, he almost certainly won a won a Pulitzer or three. Yep. Yeah. Possibly yep. a Nobel Prize. <laughs> Like oh, I'm just so annoyed at like especially the Sansa, like oh my god that just turns off. No, that's not how that fucking works. <laughs> I uh... so yeah, um, it's a clusterfuck of an ending. <laughs> it just ah. Uh... That said, <laughs> we all mean what we said at the start of the, the start of the episode of this episode. The show is so worth watching, if only for those first eight episodes. Yeah, it is nine technically. So, nine if you count episode zero. It is an amazing, just science fiction, just dismantling of, of it, you know, of, of what happens when you know the visitor from beyond the the you know the gifts from the stars, all that kind of stuff. It is so smartly written for the vast majority of the show. Yes, and even in part in parts of the crappy last three, the, the the poor last three episodes, and even again, episode nine is not a bad episode. It's a good episode. It's just not the. It's not a good episode. It's not. It's just not of part of the, sh it's, the show it's, we were watching it's, before. It's yeah, a different exactly. show. It's damage control. <laughs> but then the yeah. last two episodes happened, and we're like, but I. Uh, but still, there are bits mm -hmm. of those last two episodes that were also very good. Like there's this, uh, there, and there are moments of just like sure that okay that was really neat. Like when they get uh, the doctor to come in to into their little pocket d dimension that Sorak has created to help them come up with a way to get through the Fregonics. 
She's literally leaving a hall, and whoop, she falls to the floor and pops up. <laughs> yep. It's great. She's just talking away, and it's like, okay, so I've, I've worked this out. If we keep doing this, and hopefully if my calculations do, whoop. <laughs> and that's, that sums up the entire fucking show. Yeah. Yeah. She fell down the on great guns, and then whoop. Then right down in the friggin' meteorocrity hole. Yep. And apparently Shyamalan got hold of it and just thought... What a twist! What a twist! <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, other than that, though, up to that point, this is, like, hot, great, great science fiction. Like, I was mentally comparing this to Childhood's End. One of my favorite science fiction novels by my probably my favorite science fiction writer, Arthur C. Clarke. I sort of waffled between him and Asimov. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> For me, it's Asimov and Banks, but... Uh, the- Clark's way up there. Yeah. <laughs> Interestingly, Asimov is a co- commonality between the two of us. Shocking. Yes. It's I almost like, like the Asimov. Books with the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so almost... I'm not as well read as these two, so yeah. I mean, yeah. I might read. I might read a little bit of Crichton every now and again, but that's about it. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. And then it just becomes generic action, sort of pseudo action sci-fi. It goes from hot shit to hot garbage. It, that's not entirely <laughs> fair. It goes to heart gar- garbage compared to what it was. Yes, that's the, that's the thing. Like I said, we have watched show. we have watched far worse. Oh God, yes. there are far worse shows out there. We are we are bagging on this show so fucking hard because it let us down so much. Yes, yeah. it, it had such a huge degree of potential that it squandered, and I'm and, angry at it and, and, for and that. The worst part is not even just that it's it's wasted potential. It's, it was this. It, it went from this. The, it had all the potential, and it was so high quality. Yeah, all like it, had, it really did not feel like it was going to do this. All it had to do was nail the landing, and instead it nosedived and broke its own neck. <laughs> this is not psychopaths. No, no, <laughs> no. And I mean, we were, this we were, is we were, what happens when psychopaths forgets how to end. Right? We were this discussing is it. two of psychopaths. <laughs> We were discussing and just saying, you know, we just we just wish that like the writer of uh, Ride Backer had just walked along just as he was writing the ending and saying, no, oh, this is how you bring everything together. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, just all you need is that ending. Go away. Seriously. Go away. Rewrite it. Come back. And just staple the, the, the real three episodes on the end. And, and, and we'll, you know, we will, we will praise you. I, I, I want to oh. say this also. I hope to God, any God out there, I don't know, find one, find bunches of them, that this dude, the guy who wrote this, just gets Zeus. another shot. Yes. Like, if yeah, it's because he screwed Zeus. up the Zeus ending, require, yeah. if it's, if it's because he screwed things. up the ending, I hope he learned from it and does it better next time. If it was studio yes. interference, I hope to have the studio has heard what everybody's been saying about the ending of the show and, and takes their yeah. hands off and lets him do say, his thing. When we say everybody, we mean fucking everybody. I have yeah. not seen anybody who's seen the show who's not who's not seen the ending and gone, what? No. Yeah. I can accept that there are people who didn't enjoy the the, the beginning of the show. Like it, the show might not be for everybody. If you're not into sure. like you know, if you're not into hard sci-fi with you know a philosophical bent, the show's probably not going to be for you, and that's fine. No. <laughs> If you think Keijo is the height of, uh, you know, entertainment, this is probably not for you. Probably not. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, but, like, it's, like, uh, the really weird thing about this is watching Psychopaths, uh, you know, it's, Psychopaths is probably the smartest show we've covered. It's, like, across the board. That's the first season. The the only argument we can make for, that counter-argument, possible other one we can argue is uh, Madoka Magica, I say. Mm-hmm. It's one of those two. And for up through episode eight, like, even Psychopaths, like, it felt like it was walking on a tightrope. Because it felt like it could screw things up and fall. Kado, for those, up through episode eight, up until the ending, like, right up until the midway part of episode eight, I'd say, felt like it was, it was, it was walking the same heights Psychopaths and Madoka Magica were, but it felt like it was walking on a rock-solid ground the whole time. It was, it was fucking yeah. strutting. And yep. then it hits the halfway point of episode 8, and all of a sudden it's on a tightrope. And the episode ends, and it sort of looks at the finish line across there, across the tightrope, and decides to dive down to the safety net of med- mediocrity below. Yep. 
Yep, that's a yeah, that's that's pretty much perfect. Uh, a perfect analogy. Yeah. Because it, it's so frustrating. <laughs> It's not even like it's wasted potential because it gave us a lot. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, that's the reason I recommend the show still is because those eight episodes are so good. Yeah, mm. no, I I am not kidding when I say, despite all our bitching about the ending, go watch this show. Seriously, seriously, it's really, really this, good. Put it this way: we did this in one night. Yeah, yeah, we burned through this in a night. We're like. Oh wow, this is this is really good. We need to keep going. Yes, and yes. Considering that means one of us was up until the... eight a.m. Yeah, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> this is awesome. This is great. Oh my, the fuck! All right, now we have to see how this works. Yep. How badly can they? Oh wow, they can they can fuck this up. Mm. Now it's a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to keep watching the train wreck. <laughs> oh. So yeah. Um. God, I. I, the the re, the reason I'm most sad about the ending is I can't just say I can't say this is the the best sci-fi I've seen in like a decade. And through the first up through episode eight, it's the best sci-fi I've seen in like at least a decade, if not longer. Mm. Like seriously, it's good shit. Um. So I guess we should just go into our final thoughts because I, there's not much else we can say about this that we haven't said. Yeah. So we should wrap things up. Eric, then Gav, then I'll I'll finish it off. Cool. Okay, this show is this show is two shows. The first show is smart and philosophical and tries and largely succeeds on presenting a scenario and explore a couple of scenarios and exploring the implications of those scenarios. And it's really interesting and well thought out and well written. And despite the, my problems, with the animation, and they are many, <laughs> I did not care. That's how good the writing was. Yep. Um, and then there's the other half, where it decided it didn't want to be that anymore. It ran screaming from that. And, yeah, it, to me it reeks of studio interference, or quite possibly the the writer becoming terrified of his own story and, and retreating. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it's... Watch this show. This show is really good. Even watch the ending. Maybe you'll have a different opinion than I do. Mm -hmm. I, I might use the lineup with the other critics, but who knows? Maybe you'll get more out of it than I did. It's not a bad ending, it's just a terribly disappointing one. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah that, that's me. Seriously, watch the show! <laughs> yeah. Definitely watch the show, but yeah, it's, it's like, look, as I've been saying, it was presenting, it was presenting ideas and thoughts and uh, and and scenarios that are like, yeah, okay, this is actually interesting. This is a really cool like look at how society would react in this sort of situation. Uh, the people that are in the middle of it, and and how the various countries. Nothing was overblown. Nothing, would, no, you know, fingers weren't pointed, and you know, fun was not made at other uh, nations, or you know, the like a lot of shows would have done. Um, it wasn't. There wasn't fun made at other characters that were unaccepting of this. It was literally how humanity and the people at the front of that would react and, and respond in this situation. And it was good. It was so good. But the problem with it is it just went so generic. And it it abandoned... It, it literally chose to, to abandon the intelligence for a cheap twist, used what little intellect it had left to explain the twist, and then just went with the generic, no one gets to smile ending. Aren't I intelligent? And we, I, I, I compared it to Parasite at the time. How that show thought it was the smartest show in the room. Because it used all the big words. This was the smartest show in the room. And then decided to start throwing shit at people. <laughs> yeah. Ah, so, just so generic. 
Uh, look, definitely watch it. Definitely, you know, form your own opinions. There are a lot of interesting points in there. It is definitely worth going through. Um, be prepared for those last two episodes. It, it, it knows that again. It's not a. It's not terrible by any means, but they are two distinct shows. It, it feels like two distinct shows. And and as I will echo Peter's thoughts. Um, is it Mado Nozaki, the writer? I hope he gets another chance. Yeah. Jesus Christ, but, I do. Yeah. Oh my God. So yeah, as I said, this was in contention had this stuck the landing I think this would be my favorite series of all time mm. like as much as I love Yamato Yamato is not this smart Yamato is not this tightly brilliantly written uh, Yamato beats it on animation and that's basically it it's and also it's you know, not hard no, no, it's not. <laughs> also, not fair. Yamato is a well-animated show that was that had movie budget. <laughs> yeah, this is Toei doing CG. It's better than most of Toei's other CG stuff. <laughs> like the director knows how to frame a shot, at least. Yeah, yeah. The director knows <laughs> the fuck he's doing. The blocking's solid. The cinematography works. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the animation tech is from a technical standpoint not good. Yeah, they, they, they look a little bit robotic. Oh, it's, God, it's, yes. It's, uh, <laughs> um, it had a good director of cinematography. Yes. Uh, or I guess it would be animation in this case. I, I guess, know. I don't know. Any, but, oh my God, the writing is so good for for those, from episode zero to episode eight. And then it... Uh, I'm so profoundly disappointed. I've, I've said this multiple times tonight, and I still am. And weirdly, I still love this show. I, it, it's not the best show. It's 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 not my favorite show. It's not even my top five anymore. But those eight episodes are so good. They really are. I I uh, I can't but say anything other than kudos to the guy for w the part of it that was that was really good is so good that I have to I have to tell people to watch it just. Watch it, form your own opinions of it, but I, I be prepared to be disappointed with those last few episodes because it, it's it it uh, it's not the same show after that point. No. It, it's just not. It, it, le it leaves you physically unsatisfied. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, watch watch this show and please, dear God, and any any just please, I hope beyond all hopes that Nozaki-san gets another chance and writes something on this level again and gets to do his ending. I'm hope. also, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it was studio interference, but at the same time, I'm kind of also, like, if it's not, I don't, I, I'm entirely willing to let it, like, yeah, okay, even if it wasn't studio interference, it's a learning experience for him. This is the first big thing he's yeah. done. Like, seriously, he will, it, like, all this critique that's out there means that he will get a chance to do, hopefully get a chance to do another show where he gets to, where he actually does a stronger ending. Whether it's because he's learned how to do a better ending, or because the studio has learned, don't fuck it up! <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> this had a chance to be, literally, this had a chance to be the anime equivalent of childhood fucking's end. Yeah. I don't know if I can get higher praise than that. Like, this had a chance to be a legitimate classic of science fiction, and it's not. And that's the most profoundly disappointing thing I can think of uh, in in this is it it had a chance to be it had a chance to be great and is merely good because of the ending. Yeah. So that's Kato the right answer. The ending certainly was not the right answer. <laughs> no, no, it did not have the right answer for no. its own show. <laughs> it did not. But that's going to do it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you found this interesting, entertaining, etc. Let us know if you guys have watched it. What you guys thought? We'd love to hear other people's thoughts on the show. Yes. Uh, if you liked the ending, tell us why. I'd like to know why. I mean, we we'll, we're probably going to disagree with you, but that's fine. <laughs> 
Uh, if you didn't like the other the beginning of the show, that's fine too. It might not be your cup of tea. Uh, but I, I'm I'm genuinely curious to know what other people think of it. Um, yeah, that's part of the reason I I was so I so wanted Eric and Gav to watch this is because I really wanted to know what they thought too. And uh, yeah, we're sort of in alignment on it, unsurprisingly. More or less. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually kind of tempted to go back and watch the uh, the Funimation dub as well. Just to see if it translates into English as well. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Mm. Um, at any rate, that's sure. going to do it for this week. Eric, do you have your choice for the next series? Not yet. Okay. I, I'm muddling over a couple of ideas. That's um, fine. Like we have a couple of weeks for me to, to mull this over. So. Right, and we <laughs> plowed through this in one night. Like, I totally understand, yeah. Eric. So, uh, we'll, I, I will sort of, I'll probably post a comment in here somewhere about what episodes, what's going to be the next episode. Um, I'll post it on YouTube, what the next episode will be at some point when we actually decide. Uh, so anyways, we'll be back with the next episode once we finish the next series. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.